Christmas came a little early this year with the announcement of Daryl Sutter being relieved of his duties. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Lockdown Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and I'm here to happily interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to share the news, the reaction, and Jonathan Huberto's bold statements to the French-Canadian media uh, about Daryl Sutter's departure and what this season kind of was. Uh, And we're going to talk all about that today. Here on Locked on Flames, make sure you are subscribed and following for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it's available. There's so much news that's going to be unraveling. This was the first domino. So not only are you looking for a coach or sorry, a general manager, you're also looking for a coach now. So we we have a lot to look forward to here at Locked on Flames. But before we do that, make sure, again, you are subscribed and following for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcasts because we're in for a treat. You know, this this was quite the way to start off off a week, right? You know, uh, big upsets over the weekend in the playoffs, and then you start your week out on such a high note for uh, Flames fans. And Don Maloney said it himself, it's time for a new voice. Brad Tree Living probably wasn't going to come back, more than likely wasn't going to come back, actually. Uh, if Sutter had been fired, the organization has now made it clear that it's time for a new voice, and they are adamant that this is a, it's time for a new direction. You know, it's not just, we've made the playoffs, This this will do, or, oh, well, you know, we almost made it, like, it, there has to be a new level of competitiveness and a new level of accountability. And that's what it looks like the flames are really moving forward with. Don Maloney says, I do feel that this is the best way for us to proceed as a club. And it's an exciting time because we have a good team and good players. Everyone knows what this team is capable of, right? You had quite a bit of roster turnover, after, you know, 2022's free agency. But what matters most now is making the most of what you put on paper. And it's important to, you know, look at what happened this year and move forward from it. You know, you don't ever want to have another season like that. It was disappointing. Players were like, I don't think I'm going to come back if Daryl Sutter is the head coach. I don't think uh, Lindholm or Backlund would resign if he remained the head coach and probably more players too. And, you know, he talks about it in this press conference about how agents have a lot of pull and a lot of influence. And you know, you know Alan Walsh is one of the most influential agents in hockey simply because of his social media presence, right? Like, that is that is the marquee agent and your stars. Like, if you follow baseball, it's Scott Boris. In hockey, it's Alan Walsh. And I think for, for him to say that after, you know, Walsh called Sutter out on social media multiple times, he... People are aware of what's going on and what's being said. So he didn't divulge any specifics regarding exit interviews and meetings that he had with the group. It was a quote unquote, very, very frustrated group with how the season went. And Maloney said that he was really counting on the players to be honest and vulnerable with him so they could move forward with the next step in the next direction in this season. It, in this article, it's referred to an audit. And yeah, that's pretty much what you're doing. You're auditing your staff. And <laughs> it's really great to see that you're moving forward and, I, and not moving backwards. Because I think if you have Daryl Sutter behind your bench again next year, 
you are not doing anything besides creating more fr frustration and anger and essentially stunting the development of some some of your players like there's no you can't sit here and tell me that Matthew Phillips should not be playing at an NHL level consistently and same with Pelletier and we're going to talk a little bit more about that later in this episode and down the road because it, it's time to get this ball rolling it feels like there's finally action being taken and we're we're moving we're moving the ball moving a little bit right like there's there's progress being made you are going to be bringing in someone as a as a coach who is more in tune with today's game and doesn't just ride a heavy hand which let me actually pull up the quote here but Don Maloney says himself that the way that Sutter coaches it it just it has a shelf life I think in today's world, he's a, fir he's a firm coach, a hard coach, a demanding coach, and there's a shelf life for that type of coaching. That, that's not wrong. I think any type of coach just has <laughs> a shelf life, especially, you know, it was reported that this team didn't practice their power play units at all throughout the season, and I think we can safely say that that was so obvious I, I don't I don't know what you're doing. I don't. I, I am not in there at morning skates watching them practice, but I'm at home and sitting on this podcast talking about how their preparation was not enough. We watch the games night after night and we can tell you aren't going to be able to succeed, especially as a team, a power play unit, if you are not practicing and if you are not getting those reps in. And it is so frustrating. And I'm sure more information is going to come out as, as time goes on. You know, that's just the natural progression of the offseason. And it, it doesn't surprise me that Huberto is the first player to be like, oh, yep, let's talk. Because that's just, that's, I think that he is one of the most impacted players, if not the most impacted player based off of his performance this year and having uh, Sutter behind the bench. But coming up next, we are going to talk about the my reaction and just Daryl Sutter's downfall uh, here on Locked on Flames. But before we do that, I do want to talk to you about our next partner. And I started taking AG1 because I have a horrible stomach. I My entire life, I've grown up with stomach issues and I wanted to boost my immune system and just get my stomach in a in a happier place and with AG1 I can do that with their 75 high quality vitamin minerals whole food sourced superfoods probiotics and adaptogens they help me start my day right and keep my belly right and Again, I put it um, in my cup of water every morning. It is something that I just sip around the house while I'm getting ready for work. Just one scoop in a cup of water, stir it all up. Doesn't taste bad. Tastes like a tropically like flavored drink. Um, if you're old enough to remember Fruit 2Os, that's what it reminds you of. Or Propels. Does anybody? Oh my God, Propels. Do they even still make those anymore? But the importance of a multivitamin, it, it, it's just important, right? It's a small oh, micro habit with big benefits. You aren't going to have to sit here and pop open a pill or a pill bottle of multivitamin, shake it out, whatever. You are drinking it. It is good. And your subscription comes with a year supply of vitamin D, which is so important because you need that to keep your immune system good. And right now it's it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with the convenient daily nutrition of AG1. It is just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And thank you everyone for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. As always, it is a pleasure and make sure you're uh, subscribed to Locked on Flames wherever you're listening to your podcasts. 
listen, I, I don't know why everything happens while I'm eating lunch, right? Tyler Tufoli gets traded while I'm making lunch. Brad Tree Living, um, I'm pretty sure I was at work, but it was like on my lunch break. I There was something else that happened that we just talked about. Oh, I think it was Kadri's signing that happened while I was like doing something in the kitchen. Like I, I'm always in the kitchen or doing something. But today, today I was in my car. And it was announced at like noon that Daryl Sutter was relieved of his uh, coaching duties. <laughs> like, what was the point of this extension? Because his, I'm pretty sure that this like would have been his last season uh, of that contract. <laughs> or no, I regardless, like it just the contract extension is useless. And Daryl Sutter, 64 years old guided this the 2021 uh 2022 team into like the best hockey team that the Calgary Flames have probably seen in a very long time and he won the Jack Adams award and he he coached a fantastic team but you know things change things change uh you know there were a, there was a significant amount of roster turnover and not not every player is you know is the cookie cutter they're not it's not a cookie cutter game that's why it's so great to see different players and different styles of play and just excelling across the league and you know he could he got the most out of those players and they didn't come back <laughs> so what are you gonna do you're gonna try to do the same thing with these guys but you're not if they, if it's not working you're not going to change your results for whatever reason but I guess Backlund was supposedly there today at the press conference which which would make a lot of sense I I think that it, it just oh my god it drives me bonkers okay it absolutely drives me bonkers because you know that Backlund has been with this team his entire career. And for him to just not be able to say, yeah, like, I'll stay in Calgary. I hope to stay in Calgary the rest of my career at the end of last season. It's kind of bad. Kind of bad. Uh, it looks really bad for optics and the organization. And, you know, I think he was probably a big proponent and not having Daryl Sutter come back. Um, <laughs> Jonathan Huberdo is the first player to chime in about the firing. And it was uh, former Flames head coach Bob Hartley uh, interviewing him on a Montreal radio station. And he asked Huberdo about Daryl Sutter and how he handled Jacob Pelletier's debut and what players thought. This is such a good question, okay? We needed to know this back in January when this happened. Uh, <laughs> he said, why say that to the media and then go see the kid to tell him that he played well? I mean, it really shouldn't come as a surprise. Or no, he. I'm sorry, he didn't say I, it should come as a surprise. That's my next note. I'm sorry. But I mean, like, I think it was very obvious that that was the turning point in the season. I think that players were just like, what the heck? What every expletive you can think of gives you the right to say something like that to a, a kid. He's not a kid. But to a prospect, to a young kid making his NHL debut when he has done what he has done at the AH level for as long as he has. Um he said that Daryl Sutter's coaching just doesn't fit his game. And he said, having a new coach is going to help my game and my confidence too. Um, I, I wanted to scream when I read that quote, it, it you know, it, it's fair. Scream in like a good way, not in like a, Oh my God, like I'm so angry, but in like a, thank God, like someone's finally saying this because I'm sure this is something that has been weighing on not just him, but a lot of guys in the room for months. And it's really, really frustrating to hear him say this 
and know that he signed that extension and knowing what the expectation was and for him to fall short uh, and for people to blame him when it wasn't his fault. You know, Sutter has a certain way of coaching and he's not going to change it for, for a few players. He is going to, ride that hard. He's going to coach the same way he has since dinosaurs roamed the earth. But you know, he said what he said. I don't I don't feel bad. I hope more players come out and say something because it is absolutely unbelievable that he just could say all this stuff. And I'm just disappointed that a coach has no 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 tact. The inability to read a room is incredible. But uh, Julian McKenzie actually like was able to translate the interview because it was with a Montreal radio station, and uh, he posted an ex excerpt. Uh, it really didn't click between me and Daryl last year. There were a lot of factors. There was a big difference in points between my last two years and the style of play he wanted me to play. Didn't fit my style of game. Which, I mean, no kidding. I think we were a very, very... Oh, there, there was a new quote just posted about yeah. his thoughts on Pelletier. And I'm trying to pull it up. I'm so sorry. But it says, we were all really disappointed, especially for a young kid who comes in and doesn't need that as a young player. He just wants to play well for himself and the team. In the media, we were all pretty surprised. We were saying, that's Daryl. Yeah, and that that's the thing. This Everyone has made excuses for this man. And, ha it's just Daryl. Ha, it's just a satirism. No, he's being a fill in the blank. But I, I really do hope that something comes of, of this. I mean, things obviously are going to be changing. I'm interested to see who the Flames bring in. I'm sure that... There's going to be a long list of candidates that they want to bring in and they want to sit down and speak with because there are a lot of brilliant minds in hockey. And coming up next, we are going to talk about what this could mean for some of the players that um, <laughs> were a little noncommittal. And thank you everyone for hanging out with me on today's episode of Lockdown Flames. Make sure you are subscribed and following me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. I feel like there was just a collective sigh of relief that came over the city of Calgary and probably every Calgary Flames player on the roster. I think that it's um, it was just a very tumultuous and frustrating season for them. And they deserve better. You know, you shouldn't have to to play a way that isn't working for you and then get in in trouble, I put in quotes, for not being uh, or not seeing success. I, I think that players might not be as apprehensive to come back. I think that, you know, this kind of opens the door for new opportunities for players and for coaching, you know, I think we've seen Mitch Love's name thrown around a lot. That would be great. You know, right now, I think that he is super focused on the Calder Cup playoffs. He has that on his plate, and he'll worry about his future after <laughs> the playoff run. But the Flames have to really go at this in a way that puts them in the best spot possible. You cannot go out there and, like, go hire, like, Mike Babcock or a player like him, right? You have to go out there and hire someone that has a brilliant mind and that has – that is in touch with today's game and the reality of today's players. Not every player is going to 
be the same. And you can't expect that from coaching one team to another. I, I think that Mitch Love does an excellent job with the roster and line construction. I'm interested uh, to see what comes of like what if we hear more from Huberto and from more players because I think it's incredible that he said all of that and he is looked at as a leader in that room and you know I, I think players might feel a little bit more comfortable coming and speaking out now because you know if a leader is gonna do it then you should be able to do it really anyone should be able to do it but you know, you don't want to be that guy. And I, they need, they just need to interview as many people as they possibly can. That is the only way they're going to find success here. And they need to just not make a, it cannot be a quick decision. It has to be, these are my options. And this is what we're working with. Which one fits best? Maybe you talk to a few players. I don't know. Is that allowed? I don't know. But it just it has to be a situation where the players that you locked up for like the next bajillion years are comfortable playing here under this coach. And I would love to hear Backland come out and say something. I don't think he would. Uh, I think that he is someone that is just kind of like all business. And that's why he was just like, eh, I don't know. Backland is someone that uh, is held to like the highest, one of the highest regards in that room, as he should be. And I, I'm I'm not sure if he's willing to kind of like flip the room potentially. I mean, not that this guy is the coach anymore, but you have guys like Tyler Toffoli who have said that he l- loves playing under Daryl Sutter and same with Trevor Lewis. I mean. Trevor Lewis probably won't be back if he is. If Trevor Lewis does come back, I would be interested. I think that this general manager head coaching change gives the younger guys in the organization a chance to step up and kind of get their shot and go from there. You don't need to re-sign old men just because it's like, veterans and it's it's going to be an interesting summer I think we all know that I think we are all fully aware that moving forward things might be a little better they they could they could get worse they could always get worse but I think that there is a much higher likelihood of things getting better just because of how bad this season was and also how adamant this how adamant Maloney has been and you know they are dead set on keeping not only keeping their players happy but making sure that they can win some hockey games right because you know you can you can sit here and say like oh my players are unhappy you know I need to do something to change that but like at the end of the day you're trying to win more hockey games to get more butts in the seat to get to the playoffs and it's it's money yes but it's great to see. I hope that this summer is one of, it, it does not have to be a summer of Brad again. We really don't need to live through that kind of tumultuous uh, nonsense waiting to hear if this one's resigning or if that one's leaving and this one's getting traded. But I am very excited to see what this means for, you know, the guys that didn't get consistent playing time because of how quote unquote young they were, you know. I want to see more of Walker Dewar. I want to see more of uh, Dennis Gilbert. I want to see more of Matthew Phillips. I want to see more of Jacob Pelletier. And there are spots for them in this lineup. There absolutely are. And this new head coach and this new general manager need to find ways to utilize that high-end talent. Simple as that. And thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me today on this fantastic Monday. I hope you are having a great start to your week, and I will see you later. And we're going to just keep talking about Sutter. The the evaluations that I had planned, those can wait. There's bigger things to talk about right now. So come back tomorrow, and we're going to talk all about the latest developments in the Daryl Sutter firing. Bye-bye.